Hi yogis, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lo and it is time to flow. And let me tell you, after today's practice, you are going to feel amazing. It is a short and sweet practice for releasing tension and stress in your lower back and lower body. So go ahead and grab your mat and let's get flowing. Begin by coming into a child's position. And from here, I want you to bring your big toes together to touch, spread your knees nice and wide and sink the booty back as you reach your fingertips forward, creating lots and lots of space in your spine, stretching out through the upper body and the torso while sinking your hips down towards your heels. This is going to open up the pelvis, open up the hips and create the space to allow your lower back to release. So really, really focus on sinking the hips back towards the heels, almost as if you're pressing away ever so gently with the palms of your hands into the mat to sink your hips a bit lower. Spread your knees a bit wider and open your hips just a little bit more with every breath. As you inhale, focus on creating length and space in the body. And as you exhale, focus on melting into the mat, into the posture, coming more and more present into the body. As I said, this is going to help create the space that's going to allow allow your lower body and your lower back to really release. So often we like to rush into these postures expecting instant relief, but we have to first create the space for the postures to do the job. On your next inhale, shift your weight up and forward, coming into your tabletop position. And we're gonna take a few rounds of cat-cow. Inhale as you drop the belly and tilt the tailbone and the chin high. And as you exhale, really exaggerate that exhale, arching through the back and the spine and really tucking the pelvis under. Inhale drops the belly. And exhale is going to round the spine. Again, over exaggerate the tucking of the tailbone. You can literally feel the release in the low back when you do this. Inhale as you drop the belly. And exhale, round the back again, exaggerating, really sending the breath visually and physically into the lower back here. Now I want you to take three more rounds of cat-cow at your own pace. Feel free to invite any intuitive movement into your practice here. You can see that I'm gonna sway my hips side to side. Feels really, really good to me. Um, and just making sure you're exaggerating that tilt of the pelvis. Two of the main culprits behind lower back pain are one, underactive gluteals, and two, an excessive anterior pelvic tilt. So that's that slight arch in the lower back to really stick the booty out. So we're gonna counter that with these exaggerated posterior pelvic tilts. So focusing on tucking the pelvis under to help release some of that tightness. From here, go ahead and tuck your toes and come into a downward facing dog with a deep bend in the knees. This is going to help take some of the pressure off of the low back and allow that space to release even further. So your toes are planted. You're pressing firmly through all four corners of your palms, sending the hips up again, deep bend in the knees here. And when you're ready, you're going to straighten that out. And then we're just going to gently and slowly walk our dog, lengthening one leg while you bend the other. And again, this is just inviting some of that tension to release from your lower body, from your lower back. Deep inhales and exhales here, yogis, focusing your attention on allowing any tension to release with the breath, with the movement. Inviting intuitive movement here. You can see I'm swaying my hips side to side. I call this wagging my tail. One final deep breath here, yogis. Beautiful job. Allowing the spine to decompress. And then you're slowly going to walk your palms back to meet your feet and come into a rag doll here. Again, generous bend in the knees, resting the belly on the thighs, grabbing opposite elbows and allowing the spine to decompress. This is gonna take pressure off of the low back. Continue with those deep, even inhales and exhales, yogis, allowing your torso to be heavy here. One final breath, and then release the palms and slowly roll the spine all the way up to a standing position. 
And from here, we're gonna to continue to work on correcting that anterior pelvic tilt. So come to stand at the center of your mat. You can see me here demonstrating, this is the anterior pelvic tilt, booty out. So we're gonna correct that by tucking the tailbone, engaging the glutes, and then we're just gonna rock it back and forth. Again, you're gonna feel so much release in the lower back as you move through this. Do anywhere between 10 to 15 of these at your own pace, inhaling as you send the booty back and exhaling as you tuck it under. Every time you tuck, you wanna focus on squeezing the glutes to activate those and help support the lower back while also engaging through the lower abdominals, which will also help support the lower back. We're gonna keep going here, yogis. Inhale as you send the booty back and exhale as you bring it forward, tucking the pelvis under. Take it nice and slow, feeling rooted through all four corners of your feet. Beautiful job, yogis, one more time. And then from here, I'm gonna stand sideways so you can see, we're just gonna do some hip dips. So kind of similarly to walking the dog, but instead of being in downward facing dog, we're standing up. So you're lengthening through one leg as you bend in the other, sending the hips side to side. Again, this is gonna create so much relief in the lower back. This is also really, really opening up through the hips as we address that third kinetic checkpoint. So keep it going here, yogis. Again, anywhere between 10 to 15. Rounding out this practice. And then we're gonna stand up. I'm gonna stand sideways, you'll see here in just a sec, so you can just see. But you're gonna shake out your hips a little bit, and then you're gonna shift your weight onto your right foot, hug your left knee in towards the chest, grab onto your left knee with your right hand, and open your left arm to the left for a standing twist. We're gonna repeat this in supine in just a little bit, but for now, we're just gonna, again, engage through those gluteals to help with any gluteal amnesia to further support your lower back. One more breath here, and then we're gonna release and switch sides. So shifting your weight to your left leg, hugging your right knee, holding onto that right knee with the left hand and opening the right arm to the right for a standing twist. Inhale. And exhale. And release, coming back to center. And then we're gonna make our way into a Malasana Yogi squat. So your heels are closer together, toes are turned out. Then you're gonna inhale, arms up. And exhale, bringing the palms down through heart center, sinking the hips down. Feel free to grab a block or a bolster, anything if you need some support under the hips. But the focus here is to really continue to release through the lower back by opening up through the hips and the groin area. Deep, even, long inhales and exhales here, yogis. This can be a really intense posture, especially if you've never done it before or if you don't do it very often. So just focus on the breathing. Your arm positioning is really up to you here. You're welcome to keep your arms open like I have them here. You can also bring your hands together at heart center and kind of press your elbows into your knees. Or you can bring your hands in front of you, which is my favorite thing to do. You'll see me doing it here. Bring them in front of you, kind of tent your hands and bring your fingertips down and really, really focus on inhaling and exhaling into the back, into the upper back, the lower back, the mid back, the whole back is getting a juicy stretch here, yogis. And see if you can shift your weight even further into your heels and into your hips as you reach the fingertips away to really, really create a lot of length in the spine here. Again, breathing deeply here, yogis, shifting your weight side to side if that feels good. Remember, if you are stressing, you are not stretching. So breathe evenly. Also, if you can't breathe in a pose, then you don't own the pose. So really focus on your breath here as you allow the lower body to release. One more breath, bring the hands underneath you, lengthen through the legs and come into a wide legged straddle. Grabbing for opposite elbows, again, just an opportunity to allow the torso to be heavy, decompress the spine, release the low back, also opening up through the hamstrings here. On your next exhale, bring the palms to the mat, step the feet back, and come into a seated position and make your way onto your back. And from here, we're gonna take that same standing twist, but we're gonna do it supine like I told you we would. So you're gonna lay your left leg long, hug your right knee in, open your right knee out to the right just for a quick little hip opener here. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, send that right leg over to the left. 
taking a generous twist here, yogis. Opening the right arm to the right, turning the gaze of the right fingertips. Deep inhales and exhales. Gently twisting out through the spine, releasing through the low back. Allow the legs to be heavy here. Allow your entire body to be heavy here, actually, and just melt into the mat beneath you. Feel as if any tension that may have been present in your body is just melting into your mat. The earth is taking what you do not need, allowing you to be present, allowing you to be relaxed, knowing that you are fully supported in this moment and in all moments. Inhale. job yogis one more breath here and then bring that right knee back to center lay the right leg long and hug the left leg in this time again gently opening the left knee and the left leg over to the left opening up through that hip inhale and as you exhale send the left knee over to the right taking that supine twist Feel free to close your eyes here, yogis. Again, just allowing any tension that may be present in your body. Noticing it, first of all. Noticing where you're gripping. Notice where things feel tight or stressed. And then gently and intentionally send your breath into those parts of your body. Inviting them to release. Inviting them to melt into the mat and the earth beneath you. here and then bring the left leg back to center plant both feet now and then just shift your knees side to side again this is one of those that you are literally going to feel the release in your low back as you do this feel free to exaggerate as you drop one knee in um, and you're really going to also feel it in your hip flexor of that knee that's dropped in just keep this going for a few more breaths. Pause for just a brief second of stillness before crossing your right ankle over your left knee for a supine figure four. You're gonna thread your right hand in between your thighs and hug the figure four in towards your chest. Deep inhale in and exhale. yogis keep this up again feeling the tension slip away and melt out of your back into the mat if this is enough then feel free to hang out right here if you want to take it a little bit deeper then allow both legs to slowly fall to the left and plant the sole of the right foot holding on to the right ankle with the left hand deep breaths here yogis this is just going to give you a little extra stretch on the opposite hip and continue to open you up through the lower back one more breath here and then make your way back to center and we're just going to switch sides. So cross the left ankle over the right knee this time. Thread your arms through the thighs and hug your figure four close to your chest. 
deep inhales and exhales and also focus on drawing the tailbone down towards the mat as you continue to lengthen through the spine and release through the lower back. Beautiful job, yogis. Again, if this feels like enough, if this feels really great, then continue to hang out here. But if you'd like to, you can also go ahead and drop both legs to the right this time, planting the sole of the left foot on the mat and grabbing onto that left ankle with the right hand. Deep inhale here. And exhale. to reconnect to the intention of allowing your lower back and your lower body to relax and release, melting any tension that may be present into the mat. Release your grip on your ankle. And then again, taking those knee falls, I don't know what to call these things, but allowing the knees to fall side to side. Again, just opening up through the low back. This is one of my favorite things to do, you guys. It feels so good. Between the release of the low back and the stretch of the hip flexors, oh, it's, it's divine. <laughs> so just keep it up side to side. And then find some stillness, allow the knees to meet, opening up through the hips and the low back. And then from here, we're gonna make our way into our final position. Bring the knees up and then lengthen through the legs. You're welcome to do this against a wall for it to be a more restorative and supported posture. Or you can do like I'm doing right here. This is called waterfall pose or also known as legs up a wall. And again, it's just kind of reversing the blood flow, this time in the legs, and allowing the lower back and the lower body to relax, to release. Some studies have shown that doing this exact pose for about 20 minutes is the equivalent to taking like a four hour long nap in terms of what it does for our body for restoring, rejuvenating, and relaxing. So I'm gonna leave you here today, yogis. Do this as long as you would like. I hope that your lower half is feeling amazing and I'll see you next time. Namaste.